everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. Oh, oh boy. Some of Trump's biggest grifters are turning on each other, and I have to say it's pretty delicious. In addition to that, Trump supporters are now turning on some of his biggest sycophants and enablers in government, and all I can say is that karma is a real bitch. <laughs> so, as you know, we've for years we've watched in disbelief, in horror, as Republican lawmakers and others in government and law enforcement have just turned a blind eye to all of Trump's immoral and illegal actions. And we just kept thinking, when, when are the chickens going to come home to roost? I mean, this can't go on forever, and these people are basically making their bed. So now they're going to have to lie in it because it appears that all of these Dr. Frankensteins are experiencing the consequences of their own actions, or maybe I should say inaction, and fearing that their monster is now going to be the end of them. And in some cases, I mean that quite literally because of death threats. So in Arizona, for example, Republican Governor Doug Ducey and other election officials have been subjected to threats, intense anger, they're picketing at their homes, they've been verbally assaulted, all due to the election results, all because they dared to certify real live, true election results in the state of Arizona. And in Georgia, election officials and even their family members, their wives, have been receiving death threats or sexually explicit threats against them. And attorney Sidney Powell, who is the QAnon conspiracy theorist lady, the, the Kraken lady, as I call her, um, she is now calling for the Georgia Republican governor, Brian Kemp, to be investigated because she's accusing him of taking part in this non-existent election fraud. This is Brian Kemp, who is a huge Trump supporter. And now Sidney Powell is essentially shooting the Republican Party in the foot. She's telling Republican voters not to show up for next month's special election, where you know Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue are running for two Senate seats. And she's saying unless they force Governor Brian Kemp to call a special session of the state's legislators, people just shouldn't show up. People should just stay home and not bother to vote. And attention whore Republican attorney Lynn Wood uh, held a Stop the Steal rally along with Powell. And he's encouraging people to circle Brian Kemp's home and harass him, and even more than that. So take a look and listen. I want you to go to the governor's mansion. I want you to circle it. I want you to blow your horns until Brian Kemp comes out and orders a special session of the Georgia legislature. Get us our legislature and tell everybody we want our legislator to meet and we want him to fix the mess that he created. And then he can resign. And then as far as I'm concerned, lock him up. So they're now calling to lock up Brian Kemp. They're now chanting lock him up of one of Trump's biggest fans. I, so many sayings come to mind. I mean, the chickens are coming home to roost. Uh, you reap what you sow. I mean, how does it feel, Kemp? How does it feel to be eaten by the monster you helped to create? How does it feel to now be targeted by cult members whom you mix the Kool-Aid for and force fed them? And now they're even turning against Bill Barr. They're turning against Bill Barr, the guy who twisted the truth of the Mueller report so hard that he snapped it in half trying to cover for Trump and his 10 instances of obstruction of justice that he just so happened to fail to mention when he held his preemptive press conference to get a jump on Bob Mueller. But now, because he's daring to tell the truth for the first time since Trump made him attorney general, 
now they're out to get him. So here's what convicted criminal and Trump loyalist Roger Stone had to say about Bill Barr. No, we have a two-tiered justice system, and Bill Barr's job is to block for the deep state, which is why the Durham ploy was quite clever. Mr. Durham has taken three years to produce nothing whatsoever when he has overwhelming evidence of both treason and crime. And now, now Mr. Durham's job is to bury all of it after the election. Bill Barr, you get what you expected. So this is what happens, right? This is what we tried to warn them about. We told them, you can only ride a tiger for so long. When you try to get off, you're likely to be eaten or at least you're going to be mauled. <laughs> and that's what's happening. They created this alternate universe. They created these alternative facts. They fed Trump's base lie after lie. And now, you know, it's like dealing with spoiled children who are never told no. They're never told that they're behaving badly. They never have any consequences. They created millions of Veruca Salts. That's who I keep thinking of with this. And if you don't know about Veruca Salt, you need to go watch the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory movie because it's one of the best parts of the movie when she goes down the chute. <laughs> She's a bad egg. But, you know, they created millions of these Veruca Salts. Now they can't give her the golden goose. She wants it now. Give it to me now. <laughs> now we all have to deal with their overindulged children who were never told that sometimes you don't get everything you want. Sometimes things don't go your way. Have you ever known a divorced couple and you've got the one good time parent, the fun parent on one side who wants to be their best friend. They try to be the favorite and you know, win them over, they give them everything they want, they take them everywhere, fun, they impose no rules when they're at their house. And then you got the other parent who has to try to undo all that damage when they go home <laughs> from the carefree weekend where they're plied with sugary snacks and toys and all the latest electronics, right? So you've got the, these Republicans like Brian Kemp and Ducey now trying to say like, um, yeah, actually, we're, we're going to tell you the truth now for once. We're, we're not going to go along with the lies and, because this is a pretty big one. This has to do with our democracy or they finally realize that it has to do with our democracy after we've been screaming about it for four years, telling them that he's destroying our democracy Plus, I think a lot of them are just happy to be rid of Trump. I think that they, as we all know, have talked to reporters over the last four years and without saying who they were, they would say off the record or anonymously that they couldn't stand him. They, they think he's horrible, but what can you do? You know, he has the base on his side, so I have to go along with it. Or they're afraid of his tweets. You know, now they see a way out. It's like, oh my God, I can finally get rid of this monster. But they helped to create the monster. So good luck with that. You know, now what? Now what are they going to do? So this is not going to end well. I mean, this Linwood guy had the crowd so worked up telling them that Trump is going to be taking his second term. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. At that rally that I showed you the clip of, he told these people with certainty that Trump was going to be sworn in on January 20th, that Biden would never set foot in the White House. And these people are buying it hook, line, and sinker. They're clapping and cheering. What's going to happen when reality sets in, when none of what he's promising comes to pass? There is going to be a massive, epic tantrum meltdown, the likes of, of which we've never seen. Buckle up, everybody. This isn't going to be over quickly or quietly. As always, like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching and listening. I'll talk with you soon. Take care. 
Thanks for listening to Plants and Politics. The only way we can take our country and power back is to spread the truth and build an army. So remember to like, follow, subscribe, and share on Facebook, YouTube, and wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks again.